Number 19. The electron volt EV is a convenient unit of energy for expressing atomic scale energies. It is the amount of energy that an electron gains when subjected to a potential of 1 volt. And 1 electron volt equals 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Using the Bohr model, determine the energy in electron volts of the photon produced when an electron in a hydrogen atom moves from an orbit with n equals 5 to the orbit with n equals 2. And show your calculations. All right, so just to get this into perspective, we've gone over what these um, orbits look like in the past couple of questions. So if you need, you know, an in-depth explanation as to how to draw these, you can just always go back to those if you haven't already. But what I'm just going to say now is, remember, for any atom, there's a nucleus, which I will just put that there, which is where the protons and the neutrons are located. However, the electrons are located outside. So if I just draw this, we have one, two, three, see how big they're getting? Four, five, because we have to go from n equals five to n equals two, right? Because that's what's happening with this electron. It's saying that the electron in a an hydrogen atom is moving from n equals five to n equals two. So this would be n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, n equals four, and n equals five. And remember, n is the shell number or the principal quantum number. Okay. So that's basically where the electron lives. So in essence, this electron started off in n equals five. Its home was the shell number five, and it wanted to go shoot all the way down over here where n equals two, right? So I'll just draw a little arrow like that to show. So this was initial, and this was final. Okay, so that's what this electron's doing. Now we just gotta find out what the energy in electron volts is actually what the number is. Now, whenever you're jumping from one N to another N, there's only one formula that I, that I can think of. And you probably may need to memorize this formula, but it's the change in energy equals K, which is a constant, times one over N one squared. I'm just gonna put it as they have it in your textbook, minus one over N two squared. Now, do you see how when I'm jumping from n to n, I will use this equation because there's literally two n's. There's one here and there's one here. Now, me specifically, I like to change, whoop, I like to change these ones and twos to i's and f's. So this would be ni and this would be nf. ni is the initial shell. So in this case, the initial shell was n equals 5. It started at 5. And then the n final, this is the final shell, it bounced to the n equals 2. So I already know what these two points are, or the two numbers in the formula. K is a constant number. It's also called the Rydberg constant, but in your... Um, textbook, they give it to you as K. So we'll just, we'll just go with that. K equals uh, 2.1, 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. That's a constant number. So you might have to memorize that if your teacher or professor doesn't give it to you. And then the delta E is the change in energy. And this would also be in joules because the K constant is in joules. So they have to match. So let's just plug it in and solve. Delta E equals K, so that's 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th times 1 over, now initial was 5, so that's 5 squared, minus 1 over 2 squared. Delta E equals 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th times 1 minus 25, minus 1 over 4. And then you guys can do your PEMDAS, right? This would come first, and then you would multiply by the K constant. 
So I'm just going to plug this all into one shot and you guys see if your answer matches mine. So I'm going to say the change in energy to get that electron from the shell, the fifth shell to the second shell is 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th times parentheses 1 divided by 25 minus 1 divided by 4. And I get a negative... 4.5, we'll say, um, I guess we'll do three sig figs. So 4.58 times 10 to the negative 19th, and that's in joules. So this, this negative is telling you that energy actually was released. So when this electron went from the fifth shell to the second shell, energy was released, not gained in the process. But the question was, we need to know, determine the energy in electron volts. We found it out in joules. Now we just got to find electron volts. But they did give us the conversion factor. 1 eV equals 1.602 times 10 to the negative 9 joules. So just straight up conversion. I'll put it over here. Negative 4.58 times 10 to the negative 19 joules times by joules on the bottom, electron volts up top, the conversion tells me that one electron volt equals 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. Joules will cancel out, and you are left with electron volts. So this divided by 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. Let me just do 4.58 times 10 to the negative 19th divided by 1.602 to the 19th. Okay. Syntax error. <laughs> Don't you love when that happens? I'm just going to redo it again. 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. Okay. So technically you get negative 2.86 electron volts. Now, I just want to make something clear. That when you do these calculations and as you progress in the chapters of chemistry, especially with energy and electron volts, the calculator doesn't understand what these negatives are supposed to represent. They're just going to give you negatives in the calculator, right, in the answer. But you guys have to understand what the negatives and the positives mean. So whenever for energy, especially for energy, there's a couple of things that you should know. That if you see a negative answer for energy, I'll just put energy here, and you see a negative answer, this just means that the energy was released. So as the reaction progressed, or in this case, when the electron jumped from n equals 5 to n equals 2, energy was released. It, you know, left. If you get a positive answer, that means during the process, the energy was taken in, or it was absorbed. Always memorize these two things. The other thing that I want to say is that you can never produce a negative number for energy. So a negative number for energy. Right? You can never produce a, a negative 22 joules. The negative only signifies that that 22 joules was released. But the actual, you know, quantity of the number is positive. So here, the question said, determine the energy of the photon produced. Did they care whether it was a positive or a negative? Did they care whether it was released or absorbed? No. So how much was actually produced? This negative for the electron volts is only saying that the electron volt was released. So since you can never produce a negative amount of energy and you can never produce a negative amount of electron volts, how much was actually produced? You would only give the 2.86 electron volt as your answer because you can never produce a negative amount. The negative only says that it was released. And I hope that makes sense. All right. And that's it. So guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Memorize this formula if your teacher or professor isn't going to give it to you. Um, it would help you a lot because they do like to ask this type of question. But anyway, 
If it helped, click the like button, tell me in the comments. And I mean, if you wanna get the next batch of questions right in your feed, click the subscribe button. And you'll also help tons of other people get access to this type of service. And that is the cool thing. And I thank you for that. I'll see you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day.